everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. Several days ago, I posted a video describing my way of making dendrite fractals in acrylic paint, and I have received so many comments asking pretty much the same few questions. So I thought answering them in video form might help. The first question is, can you use food coloring or alcohol ink or airbrush paint or fill in the blank with some liquid? <laughs> and well, the alcohol ink question was answered in the first video. It didn't work for me. I tried three different tri types of alcohol ink and none of them resulted in a decent fractal. And I will show you what happens. Okay, I've spread some white paint here, and I am going to use acrylic ink for this as the control, if you will. So I am going to put one drop of acrylic ink there, and I'm going to use this as the alcohol ink. I just grabbed a color randomly. So this is um, a Tim Holtz Adirondack color. And I'm going to put one drop there. And I'm going to add alcohol to both. And mix it up. So this is the acrylic ink with alcohol. And I'm just going to put some there and as expected, a fractal is forming. And then I'm going to use the other end of the stylus so as not to contaminate. And now I'm using the alcohol ink mixed with alcohol. And I'm putting a drop here. And it spreads, but no real fractal. Let me zoom you in. It just kind of makes a flowery pattern at best, but the dendrite branching never happens. And this is the case whether I use Adirondack alcohol ink or pinata, or like I said, I used, uh, I tried a Spectrum Noir reinker. That's an alcohol ink to refill um, alcohol ink markers. That didn't work, but the little flowery thing, that's pretty. So you could always use that for something. Now, about every other liquid I've been asked about, okay, my answer has to be, I honestly don't know, because I tried what I have in the house, and once I found three things that worked, I kind of stopped. So the three things that worked for me were Fluid Acrylic. These are just two different brands, but um, they work pretty much the same way. Acrylic Ink and India ink. Those are the things that worked for me. And like I said, after I figured that out, I kind of stopped so that I could kind of, you know, like move on with my life, okay? <laughs> but don't be afraid to experiment yourselves. If you're curious about food coloring, give it a shot. I doubt that adding one drop of food coloring to two drops of rubbing alcohol is gonna lead to an explosion. That being said, please be careful about what you do and do it in a well-ventilated area. And don't definitely don't ingest anything. And if you're under 18, do it with careful parental supervision, okay? All right, moving on. Another three frequently asked questions are kind of related, and they are, do I have to make them on a tile? Because I made them on a tile in the first video. And, can, if I do make them on a tile, can I transfer them from the tile? Or can I make them on canvas or on paper? Okay, let's tackle those. The first part of the question, do you have to make them on tile? Because I did. No, the reason I made them on tile is whenever I'm experimenting, I use tile because it's easy to wipe this all off once I'm done. Tile is super easy to clean and I can use the same tile over and over and over again for experiments. And if I'm gonna do a video demonstration, I'm probably not gonna be keeping what I make in that demonstration, so again, I'm gonna use a tile because it's easy to clean off. 
but you can make fractals on anything as long as the surface is level and can handle being wet for hours, maybe even a day. Because the base for the fractal is a wet layer of white paint. And if you're using it on a surface that can't handle being wet for hours while that paint needs to dry, you're not going to be able to make a successful fractal because, well, you'll make a successful fractal, but it won't survive. So like, let's say you do it on plain paper. Well, paper would warp and buckle as it stayed wet for that long, and so your fractals would warp and buckle. So you can do them on canvas, you can do them on wood, you can do them on um, Yupo paper, on acetate, on anything that can stay level and can handle being wet for hours, pretty much. So that... If you want to use it on plain paper, treat the paper in some way so that it can accept being wet. So maybe layers of acrylic paint on the paper first so that it kind of becomes waterproof. Okay, next question. If I've painted on a tile, can I transfer the fractals from the tile to something else? Uh, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, and I don't know why this is, if you paint on tile, it sticks to the tile really well, which is good because you can use the tile as a canvas for permanent painting. But once paint dries on tile, it is really a bear to get it off. I mean, like we're talking extreme scraping to get it off. So if you want to be able to paint on something and take it off, like if you want to be able to paint it on a tile, what I do is what I did in this case, is a piece of freezer paper. I just taped it down to the tile so that it would have a support. And then I did my fractals on that. You can also do this on wax paper or a silicone sheet. And the thicker the layer of paint you put down, the easier it'll be to peel off. Here, like I said, I painted on freezer paper and I painted on the shiny side of the freezer paper. Freezer paper has a sort of paper side and another side that's covered with plastic and that side is waterproof. So paint on that side, and then you can literally peel off the painting that you've done. This is called a, an acrylic skin. So now I can peel this off and use it on something. I can glue this down to something else. I can cut this up into little pieces. Um, and maybe not this one, this one was just a test, but I would space out the fractals if I was gonna use it for something. And then you can cut them up for jewelry. You can glue your acrylic skin to a car, to a box, to whatever you want. Now, technically you don't even have to peel the skin off the freezer paper. You could just leave it on the freezer paper and cut this and then glue this onto your card or whatever it is that you want to make. Now if I had been planning to peel these off, what I would have done is given myself some lead paint because since this fractal ended on the very edge, I, I have to sort of like ruin the end just getting it started. So leave yourself some blank white paint to get it started. Don't put your prettiest fractal where you want to be able to start peeling off the paint. And then once I get part started, the rest is easy to remove. Now, if you're not familiar with freezer paper, it comes in rolls just like this. And you get it in your grocery store. It'll be right next to your aluminum foil and your saran wrap or glad wrap. Um, it is available on Amazon, but it's ridiculously expensive. Like I got this roll for under $3, but on Amazon, the cheapest I was able to find it was like seven or $9. So get it in your grocery store. So finally, this brings me to the last question I get asked. What can I do with this? All right. Well, I've spread a little bit of, uh, poured a little bit of white paint on on a tile, remember the tile is just because I'm doing it for demonstration. You can do this on anything. But I'm just going to level out my paint. 
And for this, I want to make sure that I've got paint all the way on the edge. And I have two colors of India ink in the well. I have the grass green and just red. And I'm going to add a couple of drops of alcohol and mix them up very well. So I'm going to just use the green not to make like a snowflake in the middle of the canvas, but to line the bottom of the tile. And by doing that, and letting the green do its thing, but at the bottom where it can't make a round fractal, it can only go in one direction, by feeding it here now, I will, in effect, grow grass. So you don't have to just make snowflakes floating in the middle of nowhere. You can use this to do other things too. So here, I'm thinking of this more as sort of painting with texture. And then, let's say I've decided I want to add a plant of sorts. So I'm just going to drag some green from here out. Now, once the branch gets really, really thin, it won't fractal. It really needs, like, critical mass in order for it to do it. And then, for fun, let's start to make some flowers. And if I think I need more green, I can go the other way. And if I think my fractal isn't growing fast enough, I can add a little more alcohol. That'll usually encourage it to go. There we go. You can use this to embellish, to make fun stuff, too. And I'm adding a drop of Liquitex ink in there now. This so that I can change up the color a little bit and maybe change the centers of some of these or add a couple others that are different colors. And then for fun I mixed up some yellow, just the India ink again. And let's add a pretty sun. And you can decide how big you want your sun to be. Now, what if flowers aren't your thing? Well, let's do something a little bit more modern, maybe a little bit more abstract. Spread some white paint. And remember, I'm only using a tile because it's convenient for me for a demonstration because I can wipe them off really quickly at the end. You can do this on anything that can handle the wet layer of paint. Canvas, Yupo, treated paper, freezer paper, remember that. And now I've added black um, India ink and four or five drops of alcohol. And I'm just going to start with a little fractal there and grow some larger ones as we progress outward. And so I'm just sort of gradually making 
the ones further out larger. And what I can do if I want to fill in some of the little gaps, I can either grow these so that they fill in the gaps, or I can make an itty bitty teeny baby little fractal in there. So if I want to fill in some gaps. And now I want to introduce some red just for a pop of color. And I'm going to add a couple little baby red ones down here. And so this is just sort of like an abstract explosion. And I'm just having fun. And you don't have to leave them this way either. You can change them a little bit by drawing lines through them. So you are not limited to just making starbursts or snowflakes. You can use the dendrites in other ways. I hope this video helped answer your main questions. Using just plain Floetrol or pouring medium for the background instead of thinned white paint, or using either one of them to thin regular acrylic, for a substitute for acrylic ink or fluid acrylic were all fails for me. But if you're curious, you should try too. I'm leaving it up to you now. My fractal experiments are done for now because there is paint, resin, and alcohol ink waiting to be played with and filmed for you. Thank you to everyone who is kindly clicking on Amazon links I've put in the video description boxes before doing your shopping. It costs absolutely nothing, but keeps my channel going. Thank you too to those that have been contributing for materials. You guys are awesome. And thank you all for watching. Remember to subscribe, share the video, and give a thumbs up to let me know that you'd like to see more. I appreciate each and every one of you. See you next time. Bye now.